Rosa Dolores heading back to Washington for her 16th term. She was first elected in 1990. On election night, her colleague John Larson of Connecticut's first congressional district told us Rosa is going to be the next chair of the all-powerful Appropriations Committee. Welcome, Congresswoman Deloro. Is your colleague John Larson correct? Uh, yes, he is. And John Larson is the leader of the pack. Uh, so I'm so grateful to John and my other uh, congressional uh, 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 colleagues from Connecticut who have uh, been nothing but uh, so supportive. Uh, the House members, the senators, uh, and our governor, uh, who have been enormously supportive of, of my efforts in seeking the chair of appropriations. And when is that decided? When is that, that voted on? That election will be either the 1st, 2nd, or the 3rd of December. I'm assuming probably the 2nd of December. And you think you have the votes lined up at this point? Uh, that's, that's, that's what I'm doing. It's, uh, you know, uh, a... Um, Another campaign with a smaller universe. <laughs> well put. And just how do you campaign among your colleagues for a job like that? Well, it's it, well. First, it's um, it's by phone primarily. But you know, you you would you announced that Rosa Delora was going back to Washington for uh, a sixteenth uh, term. You you build relationships. Uh, over the uh, the years that you spend here, you have working relationships where uh, uh, you, you know my colleagues have a, an opportunity and a chance to work with me, uh, to know that my word is my my bond. Uh, but they've also seen me uh, as chair of the uh, subcommittee uh, of appropriations on labor, education, and health. Uh, and after defense, the largest portfolio of programming and of resources. Through the subcommittee, we it's uh, $197 billion that we allocate, that I have jurisdiction over. Through the entire uh, Appropriations Committee, the 12 subcommittees, it's $1.3 trillion and, and uh, what would to, it mean as a for budget. Connecticut? What would it mean for Connecticut uh, if Rosa DeLauro well, was chair of the Appropriations uh, Committee? Yeah, well, you, you know, first of all, we haven't had... Uh, a chair of appropriations from Connecticut or for the Northeast, if you will, uh, 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 ever. Uh, but that it is uh, an opportunity uh, to look at and focus in on the issues that are important in Connecticut. We take a look at health care. We look at uh, research. We take a look at a defense industry. We are a defense dependent state. Uh, and all of those issues uh, with regard to uh, uh, transportation, uh, uh, agriculture, uh, the whole a panoply of government programming goes through uh, these 12 subcommittees. And what's interesting, you know, sometimes people say, well, you haven't been able to pass a bill uh, that the, uh, you know, like equal pay for equal work for women, but we deal with appropriations bills every year and they have to get passed at, or government shuts down. So it is immediacy, it's legislatively, uh, and it is, uh, a, 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 a really boon uh, for the country, but for our state as well. So before we get to that uh, Congress uh, beginning to appropriate money, uh, what, how are you uh, seeing the first week of the presidential transition since uh, Joe Biden was declared president-elect? Well, I, I think that the, uh, the president-elect uh, and his team have shown uh, what I believe is the, the reasons uh, for uh, the, the American people to vote uh, for him and the overwhelming numbers that they did. They see in Joe Biden uh, a leader who is committed to uh, bringing this country together, uh, moving forward, uh, first and foremost, getting this virus under control, because without getting this under control, that... Um, uh, our, our economy really isn't going to reopen in the way that we would like it to. And even in the face of a, an obstructionist, uh, the word, I, 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 I cannot imagine any time, we've all been around politics for lots, so, many, so much of a part of our lives that we've ever seen anything like this. 
where you don't recognize the outcome of the election, that you deny the incoming president the resources to carry out a transition, that you deny the incoming president the access to security, the national security uh, hearings on which every single day is critical in terms of dealing with those those countries that were favorable to us and those who are not. So um, going back to the House, um, why do you think, a lot of discussion about this, why do you think Democrats lost some seats in the House? Well, you know, it's, uh, elections are always so competitive. When, when you think about the um, uh, massive campaign of misinformation that went out across the country. That one, that uh, your vote probably could not be secured, that it was gonna be a fake election, it was gonna be a rigged election. And then you layer that on uh, you, you know, a, a view that scaring people that your lives, the lives of your family are at stake if you vote for a Democrat, uh, if you vote for Joe Biden, and that what your opponent is about uh, is uh, uh, not committed to law and order, not committed to safety. So you think and that a really fair that campaign? I think was one of the primary arguments uh, that was made yeah. in the campaign, and uh, and, and, uh, and massive, massive. Uh, advertising, millions and millions of dollars, uh, uh, really in misinformation, and in some instances, just bold-faced lies about candidates. Well, you, uh, you so, certainly saw some you saw uh, some unusual advertising in one of in your campaign. So we thank uh, you, thank you, Congresswoman, very much for joining us. And we'll be watching to see if you become the next yes, we'll chair be help, we'll of be watching the vote. Thank you. Saturday. Thank you. And I'm going to say thank you for cheering me on. I appreciate it. Take care. <laughs> okay. Have a great weekend, guys. Thank, thank you. you. When Face the State returns, can a governor have too many members of his own party in the General Assembly? We'll ask two Capitol insiders about Gov Governor Lamont and the many Democrats in the new legislature when we come back.